Welcome to A Fool's Fortune, Act 1. A Fool's Fortune is a card game in the tradition of Rummy, where players race to make sets, but with several twists. A deck of A Fool's Fortune contains 77 unique cards. There are two kinds of cards within. Fortunes, which are horizontal, and characters, which are vertical. Fortunes contain a realm and a resource. The five realms are denoted by color, and the five resources are denoted by symbols in the corner. Each fortune will also contain the fortune type printed at the bottom of the card. Fortunes are aligned to each other by realm or by resource. The object of the game is to create sets. A closed set, or a complete set, will have all five variations of aligned fortunes. Characters can be recruited into play by placing two aligned fortunes underneath them. Characters have abilities which will benefit you during the game. To show you have used a character's ability, you must engage the character by turning them sideways. To ready a character, return them to the upright position. To win at a fool's fortune, you must pay your dues while having three closed sets in your cache and at least one ready character in your crew. Okay, let's get into a game. The fate deck has been shuffled and I have the first turn. I begin my day with the morning phase. The first task of the morning phase is to restore my hand to the hand size of three, so I draw three from fate. The next task is to ready any engaged characters in my crew, but since there are no characters in play, I move on to the final task of my morning, which is the player allowance. I draw one more from fate. It's now the afternoon phase where I can play sets and characters. Here's my hand. Let's see what I can do. I see I have a character and two fortunes aligned by realm, the coastal location and the coastal folk. I'm going to recruit my character into my crew. Remember, when characters are first brought into play, they're engaged. And that's about all I can do this afternoon. So I move on to the night phase and pay my dues with the remaining card in my hand, the Sphinx. It is now my rival's turn. My rival had their turn, and now it's my turn again. I begin my day by restoring my hand to three, since there were no cards in my hand as I played them all last turn. The next task is to ready any characters in my crew, so I ready the maiden. And the final task of my morning is the player allowance. I draw one more from fate. It's my afternoon. Let me look at the cards in my hand and see what I can do. Okay, I see I have two fortunes aligned by resource. I have the forest location and the mountain location. You need three aligned fortunes to begin a set, and I see at the fair there is another location, the city location. I may use my character to fetch the fortune I need from the fair because one of her fees, the coastal location, is aligned to this fortune at the fair. So I engage my character, I fetch this fortune into my camp, then I play the two location cards from my hand, put them in the cache and then take the fortune I fetched, plate it on top of them to begin my set of three. There's not much else I can do, so I will pay my dues with the Royal Hounds. And that is the end of my turn. It's now my rival's turn. We pick the game back up about halfway through, and it's my turn. So I begin my day by restoring my hand uh, to its hand size of three. I already had one card in my hand left over from last turn, so I draw two more. My next task is to ready my characters. My final task of the morning is the player allowance, so I draw one more from fate. And now it's my afternoon. I look at my cards to see what I can do. All right, right off the bat, I see I have space in my crew for one more character, and I could recruit the guard. However, I'm in a bit of a bind. I'm going for a desert set here, but I notice my rival has many of the desert cards I would need to close out this desert set. So, I have to do some creative thinking and rearrange my cache. Hmm. Here's what I'm gonna do. First, I'll disassemble my desert set by bringing those cards into my camp. 
Next, I'm going to cut my maiden, engage her, and send her to the road, and bring these two coastal fortunes into my cache. I will take two of the coastal fortunes from my hand, and I will also play those on the set. All I need is the coastal treasure to close this set. Lo and behold, there in the fair is the sea chalice. I'm going to fetch the sea chalice by using my mercenary because one of his fees is aligned to the sea chalice. I engage my mercenary, I fetch this fortune, and I close out my coastal set. Let's see what else I can do. I have the guard in my hand and plenty of space in my crew, so I'm going to recruit the guard by taking two of the fortunes from my camp and use them as the guard's fees and recruit the guard. Now, there's not much else I can do, so I'm going to pay my dues. I can pay my dues with either the card in my hand or the card from my camp. I see my rival needs a forest folk to close their set, so I'm going to pay my dues with silk and spices. And I'll call it a day. Here we are at the end of the game, and both my rival and myself are close to winning. I better make something happen or else I may not see another day. I have two cards in my hand left over from my previous turn, so I would draw one card from Fate to restore my hand. Next I ready my characters in the crew, and finally I take my player allowance. Let's see what I drew from Fate. Now I need the city location to close my third set but I don't have it. However, the city wild is being used as a city folk. I can replace the wild with the city folk in my hand by shifting the wild over to my city set. I'll replace it with the city folk. And now the wild will be taking the place of the city location, closing my third set. I have three closed sets in my cache, I have at least one ready character in my crew. I will pay my dues with the trickster and claim victory at a fool's fortune, act one. Happy gaming and may your fate reveal a fool's fortune.